it can organize your notes in ways you never thought possible. I just can't believe it's this good. It's been the best tool of its kind that I've used in my entire time teaching. Hi everyone! Thank you so much for clicking on this video, I'm so glad you're here. Today I want to show you guys four teaching tools or four tools that I use for teaching my undergraduate students at University of Hawaii at Manoa, which is where I'm teaching in the second language studies department. I'm a PhD student, I'm in my fourth year, second semester of my PhD in second language studies, and I'm currently teaching language learning with technology. And in all of those classes, I've really loved these four teaching tools that I'm about to show you. How's that? And I'm gonna show you guys my screen too, except it's about to die. Well, we'll see. So let's get started. The first one. I'll start with the material collection. This is what I use as a material collection tool. It's called Wakelet and the most important thing that it has is Wakelet boards. Those boards you can kind of think of like Padlet boards, but since you can really structure and arrange them and put them into different folders and onto different pages, I use it as a collection for all my materials. So you can see it looks pretty cute. You sign up here and then you can share your Wakelet board or your space even to other students. But yeah, you can insert any kind of link. You can organize things into different kinds of collections. So you can put all your stuff there and then it just rearranges it in a different layout depending on how you want it. So you can make it into categories. You can use this, which really looks like Padlet. But what I usually use is this for my classroom where I just have a long, I guess like a blog format like a long list of things that my students can look at. I'm gonna show you guys what mine looks like so that you can see how I use it. But yeah, you can also use it for student portfolios. You can really use it for anything. It's a very, very intuitive interface. And everyone can join and everyone can add things. Everyone can download them, but everyone can also add things. This is really nice because all of your students can collaborate, add their work, can add their project work. That's what I do usually. I have lots of little tasks during class and at the end of the class everyone has to upload their product that they made during the day. It has pretty good integrations so there's a certain size of post that looks really good. You can have the exact measurements be made in a Canva post for example. You can even customize the background and even customize the little cover images but I'll show you what it looks like and yeah it works on a phone too. And this is all the things that you could be doing, but there's more, obviously. It can really be anything you like. So let's see, if I sign in right now. Okay, here we go. These are all the collections that I made. For example, this one I made for a workshop for other teachers. I made this little thumbnail image with Canva. These are some resources that I shared. This is the background that I put in there myself. You can see you can add pictures and you can also add text to every picture. You can add links, you can customize this little preview. Yeah, and I made all of these using Canva. So now I'll show you guys what my current classroom space looks like. And I really like this because you can make a space for each class that you're teaching, but it could be a space for different things. This is just a collection of collections. This is like a subfolder, no, overarching folder. And I think this is what it looks like publicly. This was my introduction section, week one and two, and all of these pictures I made myself too. Uh, so we have one section about this, one section about this, and this is where we're at right now. So there's nothing for the rest yet because I haven't made it yet. But then you can see, if you click on one, it has the image again, but you don't have to put it there or you don't have to have it there again. And then I put an image to show what we're doing that day. And then I put the activities that we're gonna do. I put where they can do the activity and then So I had to scroll through what my students made because I can't show their names or anything, but what I just scrolled through was what they made in class and they posted a screenshot of it here. And then you can see I have my exit ticket and some other links that can be helpful for them. A PDF even, and then the same thing for the second day. 
Oh, I posted this actually. After they did their activity, I thought, okay, this is something that someone really did well, so I posted that here too, so that they can kind of feel appreciated when I put it there, and then we look at it the next time in class. And yeah, that's how I use Wakelet. I think there's lots and lots of potential for this. In my other class, I made it look like this. But yeah, let's talk about prices because that's maybe the most important thing. So I, because I started using this teaching tool or this tool in general really early when Wakelet was just starting out, I still get to use it for free as in like a legacy account, they said, because now most of the features are free, but there's a pro version and I get to use the pro version just because of this legacy account that I have, which is super, super nice and I really, really enjoy it. But if you don't want to pay for it or if you want to try it out first, you can definitely do that because it has lots and lots of features that you can use without paying for it. Let's check out which of those features that is. Actually, I'll log out again to see what you're going to see if you open this. And if you go to pricing, you can see the free version comes with unlimited items and collections. Collections are the little boxes that I showed you. You can share it as much as you want. You can have three collaborative collections. So if you want your students to be able to add things, you can only do that in three different collections. Yeah, this is just an overview of what it has. You can look into this by yourself. I'm gonna link it in the description. But yeah, definitely check out Wakelet. It's been the best tool of its kind that I've used in my entire time teaching. I used to use just the learning management systems that my universities had, or I used to have Google Drive folders for my students where everything is organized in folders and the Google Drive folders are shared. And I know other people do that with Microsoft OneDrive, but I think this one is just so easy and honestly, it looks really nice. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions about it or if I can help you with anything else and We'll go to the second teaching tool that I use. The second one is the teaching tool that I use for teaching online. It's a synchronous class, so we all meet at the same time. And that's usually people use Zoom for this, right? You've all heard of Zoom. During the pandemic, we were on Zoom more often than in real life, probably. This is more like real life in a way. So you can see here, it's originally meant for offices, for co-working, for people that work from home. They say it's a smart office, the paid version has AI, but the unpaid version is really, really good. I use the unpaid version. It's really, really easy. You can honestly just click on this button and start your office. When I say office, it's my classroom. So you can start your classroom right there. It's a pretty small startup right now. And I think that's why it feels like for the money that you're putting in, which is none, you get a lot more than you should. So the free version really has everything you need. Yeah, I just can't believe it's this good. So, and we're gonna go to my classroom right now so that you can see a little bit more. So it has a desktop app, which is a lot better, or I don't know if it's that much better, but I told my students to use it so that they can just easily find it and don't have to go through the browser, especially because you need to use Google Chrome. Safari doesn't work. But this is what it looks like. This is kind of funny. So maybe I'm gonna stop my camera for now. But yeah, you can enter it. And this is what my classroom looks like. You can see I linked the syllabus. You can have interactions with different things. So if you interact with this by clicking F, it'll open the syllabus. These are all places people can sit. And I don't know why it's doing this dragging thing. I'm wondering if it's because I'm screen recording. Uh, so yeah, you can sit anywhere you like. And my, I do make my students go places and sit down when they do group work because whenever they sit next to each other, next to one another, then I know that they're supposed to be in that place, that they meant to be in that place. Whereas if they stand, I don't know if they're just walking around. So I make them sit for doing partner work. And then if they sit next to each other, so if I'm sitting here and someone else is sitting in that other tube, they can talk to each other. It'll start a video chat between them. And yeah, they can just talk to each other. Same if you go and sit here. So it's really fun 
for them to walk around it feels like you're a little bit more with each other and at the same time this it's basically like breakout rooms in Zoom. If I was to send people into breakout rooms, I can just send them off to sit next to each other. And that's really nice. Another feature that I really, really like is these whiteboards. You can see there are many. If you interact with the whiteboard, which I'm gonna do right now, it starts this eraser whiteboard. This is something my students made. Um, it doesn't have any names, so that's fine. It has a note page and it has a canvas page. You can have either only one or only the other, or you can have both. And I've used this for many things. I've even used this to have my students design apps, for example. Oh, where did it go? Oh, here. And then they can add whatever they want. I don't know what I'm drawing right now. This looks lovely. But yeah, this is what you can do with that. And then if people are using it at the same time, they can obviously use it at the same time. It's like whiteboard on Zoom, for example, and it'll save there. It'll stay there as long as, until you move it, basically. I have these, so I, you can open the file cabinet and then it has other class materials, which I really like. This is supposed to be my office over here. And then I have a computer room where on these computers, I sometimes link links that I want them to click on. So if they have a Google form, I want them to sit down here, start the computer, and then it basically shows them a Google form that they are supposed to fill out. And then this is the actual classroom. You can see it has these lines around it. They're not the nicest. I should figure out a better way to do it. But if everyone sits in here, you can see it lights up. That means that everyone can hear each other. Even if we're pretty far apart, if we're all in these chairs, we can still hear each other because it's a meeting zone, a collaboration zone. So yeah, usually I stand in front of here. I made this desk a broadcasting point, which means if I click F, everyone's gonna hear my voice even if they're not in the meeting zone. Because as a teacher, I think sometimes I just wanna say, okay, guys, I'll come back to the classroom. That's how I do that. Or if I just want to say five minutes left, or if I forgot to tell them something that I think everyone should hear, I tell them through the broadcasting podium is what they call it. And then, yeah, we all meet here in the beginning of class. And then I send them off to their different rooms or to their different areas, wherever they want to go or to the whiteboards. And we come back here after every activity usually. Yeah. I think this is just a really fun way to do an online class. You know, usually it's just on Zoom, you just see each other's faces and you see the same faces. It looks just like Zoom in here. So if there were more people, you'd be seeing in the top row, just everyone's video. But we can actually walk around and yeah, make things. Oh, and this didn't look like this when it started. I brought, I put this logo here. I made the whole thing basically just that I used a template. So if you want to make a new room, you can do that. You can pick from all of these different offices and make them your classroom. They look really, really cool. Yeah, they look amazing, but you can also start from scratch, which is probably easier, uh, which is probably harder because they do a really, really good job for making these. And then once you have the map, you can change everything in it um, just by clicking this little map maker icon. So you can put whatever you want, you can place it everywhere, and they keep adding things to it too, which I really like. Yeah, just go through it and see what there is to make. There's a lot. I use this letterbox, mailbox, to submit assignments, for example. I really like it. So yeah, if you have any questions about sew work, or how to run a synchronous class, or how to manage a class on sew work, or if you just want to let me know if you've used it before or if you want to use it, put it in the comments or message me on Instagram too. I love to chat about this. And now I'm going to show you guys the third one. So the third thing that I use, the third teaching tool that I use is Slides Go. It looks like this and it's a tool to make Google Slides or PowerPoint Slides. And I basically use it for almost every activity that I make. And I really like Google Jamboard, but I know that they're not gonna be around for much longer. I think they're not doing Jamboard anymore because there's just so many other competitors on the market. 
that they don't want to do it anymore or that they think they can't compete anymore. I love Google Jamboard, but you can use Google Slides for everything that you would be using a Jamboard for actually. So what I do usually is I go to Slides Go and depending on what I want to have my students do, I search that in the template. So you can either have, if you want to do a Jamboard for example, which can be my first example, I'm going to look for sticky notes. And I think there are some good sticky note options, which is basically what a Jamboard would be doing, right? So you can go to this one, for example. It's not the prettiest looking one, but it works. Oh, it doesn't look too bad either. Yeah, and then you download the template. You download it for either Google Slides or PowerPoint. I don't know if you have a shared, if you have an option to share PowerPoints with everyone live, you can do that. I always use Google Slides because our institution uses Google and everyone can chime in on Google Slides usually. So I do that. It makes a copy of it. Yep, you say make a copy. Then you invite all your students to this document. Obviously, if you're prepared beforehand, you can just delete every slide except the one that you want or accept the two that you want. And then usually every item is movable. So if you say, I like the pros and cons, maybe that's what I wanted to do anyway. I can put the prompt here and I can tell my students, okay, choose one of these sticky notes and put your idea on here. And then you can move things around. You can make them bigger or smaller, almost with the same functionality as Jamboard. And it's always saved here, which is pretty nice. So this is one way to use Slides Go. Let's go back. They're prettier ones. Some of them are premium features, but you don't need the premium plan. You can just go through the free ones. This is a free one and looks pretty nice actually. And it always has extra resources at the very end of each slideshow, which is also really nice. Then let's see, is there something like a scavenger hunt? Treasure hunt, I've used this one before. Yeah, I really like it. This is something that you can use for your students if you want them to have like a clickable slideshow, then this is definitely for you. You do the same thing. You download it, you make a copy, and these are all free to use except that you have to keep the very last slide which says keep this slide for attribution which is super easy to do it's already there for you you don't have to add anything the really good thing about this which i really like is all these buttons or all these yeah things that look like buttons are buttons so if you were to put it into slideshow mode this will get you to places and then you can navigate it through here which is really nice oh there's nothing on this or it's not loading it wasn't loading actually. But yeah, you can go to all of these, you could go to all of these slides. And then let's say if we went to this slide, this game, you could make it into games. You can put your own riddles, you can have anything you want there. So you don't have to go with whatever is on here, obviously. So I really, really like that. I like what you can make out of it. I like, yeah, how nice it looks because if you're not good at design or if you don't want to spend ages, on designing all of these, it looks really, really cool. And it's not just for slideshows, right? It's for things like this too, and I really like that. Oh, if you wanna use this for students, if you want them to move things or to add things on their own, then obviously you have to have every student make their own copies. So I've made workshops before that students can go through it in groups. They go through it on their own time, which is nice, so I don't have to instruct. But obviously each group had to make their own copy of it, which is pretty easy. You can just offer one, but don't have it editable. You would be going to share, then you can click sharing for people that are editors or for people that are viewers. If you put it only for viewers, you can, or your students can make a copy of it, and then it's their own version and they can share it with you as the instructor and with their group mates or just by themselves, depending on who you want to work on it. Um, let's see, premium plans. Yeah, so I guess if you're a teacher or a student, you even get a reduced price, $14 a year, two Starbucks coffees a year. That's not much at all. 
and you get the premium plan which means you can get all the pretty ones so that's worth it but I don't have the premium plan and I've gotten by pretty okay but if you want to try it out and then think you would really benefit from it I don't think this is bad at all so yeah this is the third teaching tool now let's go to the final one I think you might all know this it's called notion this is what it looks like I use it for my lesson planning and you actually might have seen that in the Wakelet when I was talking about the Wakelet stuff. I showed it to some other educators at my institution that I use it for lesson planning and I shared my lesson plan template that's in Notion with them. And I'm happy to share it with you guys too. So what it usually does or what it mainly does is it's a super, super complex notes app. That's all that it is, but it can organize your notes in ways you never thought possible. Lots and lots of people use it. So work actually uses it too, because I see sometimes if you go to a help page, it's a page in Notion and you can share your notes. You can share it with anyone, um, which also makes it really, really nice. But yeah, this is what it looks like. You can collaborate on it. You can integrate calendars. And yeah, you can plan your entire life in it. You can have a look at it yourself, but I'm going to show you guys my lesson planning notion page. This is my home page. And then I have a lesson plan template is this. So this is what it usually looks like. I put any reminders that I have up here. I can change them every day, obviously. And then for every day that I teach, I have an intro, two activities and an exit. And then for every intro, I have a check-in. I activate the background knowledge of the students and I tie it to the new topic. For an activity, I have all of these. And then for the other activity, I have the same things. And then these are the things I want to, you know, remember for my exit. And then when I plan my class, I go like this and I say, okay, for the chicken today, I want to greet my students and ask how their weekend was. And then after I did that, I check it off. I don't always check off everything because it's kind of a lot to do, but when I have some free time or a free second during teaching, I do that or I just go through it after, see if I forgot anything that I have to put in the next lesson plan, for example. Uh, so you can uncheck it again. And this way, at least I never forget or almost never forget to do all of these things, to check in with them, to activate their background knowledge, to tie what we did to the new topic that we're doing that day. I also have something that reminds me to think of additional ways to help students that are a little bit slower, um, to keep in mind something that I can give my students that are a little bit faster in case they finish early. Yeah, and this is just how I plan every single lesson. Oh, I can put the, the minutes that I think I'm gonna spend on it here. Yeah, this is how I use Notion for lesson planning. Go look at other Notion videos on YouTube. There's lots and lots and lots. Look at other templates too. If you wanna use this to organize your life, definitely do that, definitely find other templates and yeah, have fun with it. Let me know if you wanna use this lesson planning template or if you want any tips, if you want me to look over your lesson plan or if you want me to go into detail on what I think is important for a lesson plan. Just let me know any questions that you have. I'm so happy you're still here. Thank you for listening to all of this. Subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed this. If you get anything out of this, like the video and put anything in our comments that you would want me to know that you want to talk about i'd love to chat with you guys about teaching undergraduate classes thank you so much and see you in our next video you might be wondering why i'm sitting on the floor that's just how i like to do my work when i'm at home i have my laptop right here because if i sit on the couch it's too low and it kind of hurts my back so i'm gonna be sitting here out of the four teaching tools there's gonna be one for lesson planning one for making activities for my students one that i use for collecting my materials and having all my materials in a organized place to show to my students and then the fourth one is what i use as a virtual classroom because this semester i'm actually teaching fully online a not asynchronous a synchronous online class so we're meeting all at the same time but it's all online my spring rolls are ready
Uh, safari. Safari doesn't work. Saf safari. Safari doesn't work. Oh, I didn't tell you guys about the pricing for sew work. 